life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it, right? I mean, think about all the different situations that happen to us on a daily uh, basis. It's our reactions to these circumstances that make us who we are, that make us good at the things that we're good at or weak and our weaknesses. So powerful quote, and this is going to be our segue into our personal development section. Attitude. Attitude comes from what? It comes from our thoughts. And our thoughts are based on our perception of things. And as we've said earlier in the program, you know, our thoughts really control everything that happens in our body. Uh, physiologically, if we think about a delicious meal, what happens? Our mouth starts watering, our stomach starts growling, right? If we think of a scary thought, maybe we get goosebumps or our pulse elevates, that flight or flight instinct kicks in to get us out of harm's way. So thoughts are, are very powerful things. So what we're going to do today is we're going to explore how we can control our thoughts, how we can change our perception, and how we can then modify our attitude. Because we wear our attitude everywhere we go, right? I mean, we spend thousands of dollars on clothes, on makeup, on hairstyles, all these things. But we often forget that the most important thing that we wear is right here on our face. I mean, who wants to do business or interact with this guy walking around, right? So these attitudes that we wear outwardly, they attract positive people. They attract positive experiences and positive opportunities in life. So be cognizant of how you're carrying your facial expressions and how you're wearing your attitude on a daily basis. One of my favorite exercises, when I pull up to a stoplight often, when I'm sitting in a red light, I'll do a quick little smile check. I'll look up into my rear view mirror and I'll see, you know, how's my face? Am I stressed out because I'm late or am I happy? Am I preparing myself mentally for the meeting that I'm about to go into? Viktor Frankl had a great quote. I mean, this guy survived the Holocaust in a concentration camp, but in spite of all the, the, the trauma that this guy witnessed and went through and all the, the massive uh, you know, tragedy that befell his uh, fellow Jews, you know, he said, the last great freedom of mankind is the freedom to choose your attitude under any set of external consequences. So you think about that. What does that mean to you? You, know, you choose to, to perceive a, a situation as stressful. You choose to put that burden on yourself. You know, if you're running late to an appointment, it's bad enough you're going to show up late, but do you want to show up late and stressed out in a bad mood? I mean, it's a double-edged sword there. So... You know, kind of understand that, that you have the power, that perception to change, and you have the power to perceive things the way that you see fit. Now, there are a lot of things out of our control. A lot of tragedy has uh, befallen the country, the tornadoes that have happened this year. People have de been devastated, lost everything, lost family members, lost you know, their, their life's possessions. But once again, it's, it's up to us how we choose to perceive those things. You know, there's a lot of things that we can't control, but if we start to focus on the things that we can control in life, then slowly but surely we can create ripple effects that bring other things previously out of our control within our realm. Domino effect. You can create a massive chain reaction with what? Just one small movement, right? So for example, how could changing your diet, your eating habits, how could that change your attitude? Well, here's maybe a domino effect that, that could follow. We change and start eating healthier foods, like the fast foods, the healthy fast foods we demonstrated <laughs> last week. Gives us more energy. All of a sudden, we've got this rejuvenated energy from eating healthy food that all of a sudden we want to use to exercise, to walk, to start engaging in physical activity. That helps us straighten out and correct our posture, helps us oxygenate more. We get more oxygen in the body, and guess what that produces? More energy. With more energy comes more productivity. With more productivity comes more money in the bank. More money in the bank puts a big smile on our face. And then guess what? All of a sudden, we have a completely different attitude, right? Just from one simple change in our eating habits led to that chain reaction. True or true? True. Indeed. <coughs> Attitude, one's mindset or perception of situations, circumstances. That perception is going to be based on the angle at which you look at something. So there's always different ways to perceive or look at things. And you could even have a tragedy. You could fall down and break your leg. 
you could find the silver lining in that dark cloud and say, hey, well, you know what? This is an opportunity to learn how to use crutches. I don't know. <laughs> Any opportunity is a learning opportunity as I see it. But let's, what, let's do a quick exercise here in perception. All right, first instinct is to take off running if you were to come onto that in the woods or even just seeing a, a picture of that could instill fear in us, right? I mean, this certainly looks like it could be an angry mama bear protecting her cubs ready to, you know, rip somebody's head off, right? But what if it was just a big, cute, cuddly teddy bear that just awoke from a long winter's hibernation and was yawning? Possible, right? Depends on the circumstances, how you look at it. Here we go, here's a good one. Big guy looking in the mirror, seeing a very fit guy. I think some of us are often guilty of that, and I think that that perception could probably f be flipped 180 for a lot of women, um, tend to see the opposite of that. Nonetheless, it's our perception, it's how we're seeing ourselves. The glass. Is this glass half empty? How many half empty people in the room? Raise your hand. One half empty, okay, two half empty. What about half full? Where are my half fullers? It could be both. Who would just maybe say that the glass is just too tall? <laughs> <laughs> you know, glass is too tall, get a shorter glass. Or, you know what, what's one of the most valuable uh, substances we're air. breathing in all day? You could look at that glass and say it's already full. It's half full of water, half full of air, the thing is full. <laughs> Now, if we're trekking across the Sahara Desert and we're dying of thirst, any drop of water in that could be thirst quenching. Who cares, you know, whether it's half full or half empty, right? So it's all about perception and how you look at things. You guys ever heard the saying, I once cried the blues because I had no shoes, and then on the street I met a man with no feet? This is a, a true story to me. It uh, has a great meaning, and it has really motivated me and shaped my life. In my former life and career up in Virginia, I was a realtor and a contractor. I led a very hectic schedule. I typically worked 16 hours a day. I had 11 full-time employees and dozens of contractors, multiple projects going on at any time. I can cite one day in which I had a life-changing event. I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I had multiple fires I was putting out. My phone was blowing up. I was texting people. I was driving along. And all of a sudden, I came up to a stop sign. And I know every one of you guys have probably had that realization where you come up to a stoplight or stop sign. You say, oh my god, how did I drive <laughs> to this point right here? And did I stop at the last few stop signs, or did I blow right through them? The state I was driving in, I might as well have been drunk. I was so distracted. My mind was in a thousand places. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to make it to the gym today. There's no way I'm going to get in a run today. I'll be lucky if I can get through the day and put all these fires out. And then all of a sudden, I looked up from the, the T intersection I was at, and across the street, there was a homeless man. And unfortunately, in Richmond, Virginia, it's not an uncommon sight to see a homeless person on the street. But there's something very unique about this gentleman. Um, he is relegated to a wheelchair. It's hard enough to be homeless, but to also be in a wheelchair and to be legless from the knee down, I mean, talk about a challenge. He had all of his worldly possessions strapped to his wheelchair. And he's sitting there at the bus stop directly across from me, folding something in his lap. And he looked up at me just as I was looking at him, and we locked eyes. And he gave me the biggest smile, just for no reason. And I thought to myself, wow put on my blinker, I put down my phone, I checked the traffic, I made a left, I made another left, I headed back home, I parked my truck, I texted every appointment I had, canceled it the rest of the day, I called my foreman, I said, I don't care what's on fire, don't bother me. I went inside, I put on my running clothes, I put on my running shoes, and I went and ran one of the best seven or eight miles I've ever ran in my life. And when I got back home, I patted my legs, and I thanked my lucky stars, and I thanked God that I had legs and was able to run. And I promised myself at that moment that I was never going to let myself reel out of control like that again, that I was never going to let stress get the best of me. I realized that I had a lot of things to be thankful for and a lot of things that I was taking advantage of and didn't appreciate. So I credit that man in the wheelchair for saving my life and my legs because who knows? If I had continued driving in the state I was driving in, I may have pulled out in front of a truck, gotten T-bone and died, lost my legs, or even worse, hurt somebody else in the process. So there's a lot of people out there that have a lot less to be grateful for than us. Even no home, no legs, stuck in a wheelchair. 
that can find gratitude and find a reason to smile for no apparent reason. I'm going to introduce you to another uh, one of these individuals who not only controls his own attitude remarkably, but makes an impact on tens of thousands of people. Um, this gentleman I'm going to introduce you to has quite a handicap and a challenge. Has anybody heard of Nick Wojcik? No? He's a New Zealander. It's a very interesting fellow, so we're going to watch a quick video. Here we go. I wasn't ready. I have no arms and no legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. <laughs> People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool, I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down and here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? And there were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have and you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, because wishing won't help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be I can't even hold my wife's hand. It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Oh boy. Woo! It's freezing. I can't feel my hands. <laughs> I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand. And you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use in yours. Being patient is beautiful. I, I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home. And angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are beautiful. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And you boys, you're the man. <laughs> On this DVD, I share my experiences in life of how I've overcome challenges, and seen a new, fresh perspective in life. To be thankful, to dream big, and to never give up. I speak to children, youth, and adults about key issues and principles that I've applied in my life that has given me the strength to conquer all that comes before me. Wow, huh? Mm. Kind of puts whatever problems we think we have into perspective, huh? I mean, if that guy can get up and get dressed in the morning and go out and do what he does, staying up in front of people like that, with the attitude that he has, even being able to laugh about it, I mean, 
wow, that is extremely powerful. And I know my just two-second smile exchange with the homeless man was powerful for me in my life, but this guy lives it on a daily basis and makes a difference in others' lives. So my question to you is to, to think about what problems you think you have. Put them into perspective. How can you turn them positive? How can you make a negative positive and even better, make that negative a positive that can positively impact others' lives?